we are doing irises. I saw that, yes. And as always, when, when I do things that are, you know, sort of slobbery with paint, I do a lot of them because I keep thinking, oh, if I do it this way, then it'll be better. I have paintings in various stages. I have uh -huh. this one, which is the most advanced, this one that hasn't had any extra things done to it, and this one that is only tape. <laughs> <laughs> All ready to go. Yeah. So ammonia doesn't dry. It dries so that you touch it and it's dry. But if you if you don't do anything with it, it gets different. Like the next day, Ooh. it's different. So this one is this one it was done. The original ammonia splashing was done. This one was done Monday. This one was done yesterday, I guess. And this one was done today. This one. So this one isn't, the, the ammonia stuff is not as developed uh -huh. as it is in this. And I did not realize that before. Even when, um, it, it, if, you're, if you're supposed to use ammonia, you can't use alcohol. They're not interchangeable. Is that correct? They're not interchangeable. But the reason I discovered ammonia as a painting thing was because I didn't have any rubbing alcohol left. So I tried... First, I tried hydrogen peroxide, and that does nothing. It's just like water. It doesn't do a darn thing. And then I tried gin, and that was pretty good, you know, uh, but not as good as alcohol. And then I tried ammonia, and it was it was the most dramatic, uh -huh. it had the biggest effect. So I totally abandoned alcohol. So you can use alcohol, but ammonia is more better. dramatic. And in fact, well, not better, because again, this is a lesson about not having about letting go of control. And so alcohol is a little more controllable. <laughs> but ammonia, and I, and I don't know whether you can see see it. It's, it's probably best here. Oh, yeah. That flower. See, see how it's got ripply things? Mm, yes. And that's what reminded me of irises. I was going to do more cherry blossoms. So I put a blob of pink. And then I put some ammonia on it thinking it would ruffle out. And I said, that looks like an iris petal. I don't care even if it is pink. <laughs> it Hello. looks like a, a pink iris. So that's why I switched to irises. You get better by painting. That is true. And I, on this first one that I did, I did a background, oh, you know, sort of a meadow. Yeah. And I decided it detracted from the irises. So now I just like a green and sky. Um, mm -hmm. I like the background. I like and the I green. taped the leaves. Um, and oh. so I've taped leaves here. And I've taped leaves through, throughout. And so first I'm going to do a quick and dirty sky. So I'm using my regular favorite blue and dumbing it down a fair amount. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of, of, of rose, I think it's rose matter, whatever this is, because I want it to be a little purpley because we know I'm gonna mess up with the purple. <laughs> so if there's a little purple in the sky, it will help with that, but lots of water. And so I'm just slobbering it on. And that way you can see where the tape is about halfway down. Oh, that's a darker sky than the other one. And maybe a little streak of the pink. And then I'm going to do the same thing with green down below. I like my hookers green. So since I'm going to have these blobs of purple, I can just do this. But st I'm still trying to keep the idea of, you know, up and down. And I want these light because I want my front leaves, the taped ones, to be the dark part. So that should dry, in, you know, in seconds. In the meantime, we will think about, I don't know which one to mess with. I'm going to mess with this one because it's, it's better developed. Um, the big thing is, if you're good at Rorschach tests, <laughs> is figuring out, finding the iris. It's like, where's Waldo? Except it's, where's the iris color? And then taking away things so that it, it's more obvious. So... Like here, it's sort of like an iris petal, this, this white, whiter bit. So I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna sort of dumb down some of the purple. Whoa, there's dirt on that brush. Tissues, yes. So now I've got a nice little bit of yellow here where I was gonna dumb down. So maybe I have to make use of that. So I pulled stuff off to make this more distinct as a petal. And so then this is gonna be the top of the petal. And here's my center of my petal. And round it out a little bit. Because that's the back petal. Okay. So now I'm going to stick my little bit of yellow in. 
And of course, it's gamboge, which is maybe why I like Iris to begin with, is because they, they do have that kind of really strong yellow. On our walk today, we passed a house on Duddington Street, and they have huge white irises. Really? Wow. I mean, they were up, you know, the tree box is a little bit up, you know, mm -hmm. maybe 10 inches up, but they came up to my shoulder. Wow. Whoa. And, you know, I'm, you know, five nine-ish. So they're huge, those irises. Gorgeous. And, and one of the stalks was so full of petal blooms that it couldn't stand up anymore. And I, I tried to, you know, sort of prop it up and make it stand up. And then I noticed the inside and it's this, this bright, bright white and then this gamboge yellow in the center. So I said, I have to get that picture. So now that hopefully looks like an iris. This. That's the idea. That's what we're playing. We're playing find the iris petal. Here's another one. Here's the center that I did before. John find just takes another sip, sip of wine. wine. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last. No, well, it's not the last step. The last step is taking the tape off and doing the leaves. This, yes, this is the penultimate step. Oh, and yeah, because I, I knew it wouldn't take long for that to dry. I'm going to make my splotches. A huge splotches of purple so they can dry. So now I'm just slobbering purple and I'm trying not to be too, you know, directional. I'm trying just to slobber. So there's some slobber. Did you put the tape on for the leaves already? Yes, yes. That I did. That I didn't think any of you needed me needed to watch. Oh, and I found a new tape, not not for well, I haven't used it for for taping, for taping in the painting. But now I don't want them all the same height. Then it looks like, then it looks too regular. Um, that if you use surgical tape to tape down paintings, that it, it really holds them very, very flat. It's very, very, Ooh. very tight so that they are less likely to buckle. Um, so here's my amnoia. <laughs> She's suggesting that she taped me to the bed with surgical tape so far. <laughs> dream on, dream on, dream on. <laughs> oh, I was going to use the, the, I was going to try the Q-tips. The other thing I've done it with is, is a little eyedropper, you know, that I, that I seem to have lost. So I'm not going to do it. And on the big one, I, on, on this one that was all done, I just squirted it out of the, out of the bottle. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is not enough. Maybe I'll squirt it. These are very tiny bottles. They don't squirt a lot. But you can see it's beginning to work already. Okay. Well, I can talk about this one, which is a different way of approaching it. And the greatest thing is that I put it on top of a piece of paper that I had stuff on already. And so this is where I was practicing oh. with my Q-tips for last week. And I will start this type of thing, which is basically wetting the whole thing. And in fact, if I had an even bigger brush, I would use it. And we won't get to finish this, but what, what I'll do is I'll show you the way I did the way I did this one. Oh, look, the pink is coming up. That's fun. So this will be a very pink set of viruses. And now do the same thing with the purples. And I want to remember, well, I'm gonna turn it the other way. because I really didn't like the fact that it's totally closed in at the top. So I'm gonna try not to put so much up top as I did last time. But I have to cover up the old stuff, you know, because I don't want that anymore. And then maybe I'll take a dry, a cleaner brush and get rid of some of this top. And sort of splash it all about. You know, you put your right foot in, you put your right foot out, you put your right foot in and you shake it all about. That's what this is all about. Shaking it all about. Shaking it about. Yep. This is not enough paint. In the middle, I want a lot of paint. And then, and that's, that's what I told you I did. Oh, well, that's too much there. That's a puddle, not just a drip, it's a puddle. Oh, it smells. <laughs> <laughs> Here are your sinuses. So it's beginning to work already. Very interesting. Is, is that ammonia, you said? Yes, it's ammonia. It smells bad. I can imagine. God. Because <laughs> yeah, I just sprayed it all over the place. I, I I hesitate to put it in a spray bottle. I, I mean, I think that would be so cool to just spray it with a with a you know with an old Windex you know bottle or something. What you should do is get a Windex bottle, the kind that had ammonia in it, and, and use that. 
and just use the Windex. Use I've the Windex. Yet, but I've got Windex. That's what I'm going to try to use. Ah, then you can tell us how it works. Yeah. So that's beginning to work. And I think I'm going to add a little more purple because I see, it seems to be washing out a lot of my purple. Where'd it go? Here it is. Especially down here in this puddle. Oh, so so good tape for taping down, which I didn't use with this because the, because this was a piece of paper that I was going to throw out. Um, surgical tape. And the gal who did it said that it's it's not very waterproof, so you may want to you might want to put tape over it. But I slobbered this one just the way I slobbered this this. <laughs> Excuse me. And this was done with surgical tape. And look at how nice those margins are. I mean, all well, that's very clean, I think. And it didn't it didn't bend. I mean, no, it didn't buckle at all. It bent now that it's off the board, but it didn't buckle. So I'm putting this down. And what do we go back to? We go back to look at this. So here's that iris petal now looking a little bit more developed. Windex doesn't work. Windex okay. doesn't work. Nope. No. Well, if you have an empty Windex bottle that has in it, you could just, never mind. Yeah, but it, it, what it worries, I mean, it's, it's bad enough to breathe it when you throw it around like I just did. And so I'm wondering that if you aerosol Windex, it might be bad. Could well, well be. Could well be. Yeah. So that makes me a little nervous. Okay. So now I have to find another iris. I've got this one. I've got this one. I've got this one. This one. This is, oh, here's a center and some petals. So if I continue to Oh, and this one has, I already put a stem. I think I already decided that was an iris. And in fact, I wiped some of it out. <laughs> so now I'll have to put some of it back in. Here we go. Oh, and irises have six petals, John. Uh-huh. I thought they, five, six? Six. Ooh. I counted them. I counted them for John. Well, is that funny? The one that's, uh, I'll, have I'll have to look. The one that I'm painting has five. Well. Maybe I had a funny one. I, I was I counted the uh, the white ones. Maybe but I'm sure they're I'm <laughs> sure they're the same plant. The one on the website's got five. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, maybe it was an anomaly. Yeah. They're not all the same. There's, there's like yeah, it's going to be different. One petal that's really weird. That's yeah. Very odd. So let's put our yellow in and see how that works. Huh. I've just looked up. The flowers commonly possess three sepals, three petals, and three broad pollen receptive stigma branches under which the pollen producing anthers are hidden. So it's so it's a it's a threer. It's a it's a flower it's, that thinks in threes. Yeah, so it says of the six petal like floral segments in irises, the more erect inner ones are called standards, and the usually drooping outer ones are called falls. Oh. So there's three sepals, three petals, but they kind of look like I'm just looking at the picture now. Oh. It does look like five, but there must be Another part to it. One, two, three, four. Oh, yes. No, I can see. I think. Oh, <laughs> my eyes are deceiving me. Well, I, I think that that at least one of them is not as well developed as the others. But when you're actually looking at the flower and counting, mm -hmm. then it yeah. looks like six. This, this is really ugly, whatever this is. Oh, put paint back in it. It's unique. It's unique, but, but we've been looking at five and four. Four, yeah. And so Just an iris is a six, even if it doesn't sort of look like a six. And they are very sort of random looking. <laughs> My irises do not look like irises. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why they're good for this kind of lesson. Because <laughs> they're sort of random. <laughs> oh, crazy. crazy. Yeah. Let's get some water. Okay. Have I gotten all the irises I can find here? These look like the droopy. This looks like the droopy thing. How to correct a thing without wiping out the fluffy thing from the ammonia. The amnoia. Yeah, Chris is reminding me it's amnoia. It's not ammonia. Oh, the joys of dyslexia. Okay, I'm going to say I'm not doing any more irises. I am doing stems, which I'm liking with my water brush, which we talked about at great length last week. And I'm doing it with Hunter's Green with a little bit of black. Now, I could also do it with, with Hunter's Green and Purple because that green and purple are very happy to make black. <laughs> so if you only put a little bit of purple, in fact, let me do that over in the corner. Here's, where's my purple? My purple is not in my regular box because I mix my purples. It's in one of my jars. And here's my blue. <laughs> and here's my purple so that I can make it bluer if I want. So there's my purple. And now let's put some Hunter's Green in it. 
See, and that comes out to be a very, very interesting green. It's bluer than I like for the stems. I could add some yellow, of course. I uh, watched a video of a guy who did his entire painting with purple, green, and gamboge and white. He was, wasn't a watercolorist. He was a uh, gouache. So that's thicker. And so you think more like a, an oil painter, not as much like a watercolorist. It was very interesting because he was, you know, he was doing something that has sort of normal colors. He has your favorite yellow. He had my favorite yellow. Okay, so this is all tape. And that's all, that's got a stem. And this one has this stem. And this one has a stem. And this one's stem would be about here. And then there's a question of what do you do with the things that are in between that aren't quite irises, but they're purple, but they're definitely purple. Good question. Yeah, it is a good question. And I don't know what the answer is. I think probably you put a lot of green on it. Okay, so it's, that's almost done. That's just this wet spot. I'm gonna blot that and get a white spot. There, nice little white spot. And I can use the Q-tip to make it. Oh, I'm gonna stick the Q-tip in the ammonia and stick it in that middle and see what happens. Don't put it in your ear afterwards, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what happens when you put watercolor in your ear? <laughs> <laughs> you end up with a dirty ear. <laughs> yeah, burnt eardrum. Yeah. Okay. So that's going to do whatever that's going to do. I'm going to let that dry. This is the one that I did at the beginning of class. It's still too wet to mess with, but you, but you can begin to see ha, the best one is right there on the tape. That is the best one. But you can see how you can begin to work with that. But I'm not going to work with that. <laughs> I'm going to pull the tape off the one that I did before so that we can see it with tape, without tape, because this is the driest. That it goes right into the flower. Well, this is not working. This tape is it's too stick, too stuck. It's destroying my paper. Is there a reason you did not use goop? Uh, well, because it's easy to make these kind of spear-like leaves with tape. Okay. They kind of do look like irises with, with you know, mother-in-law tongues in the front. You know, those yes. Yes. snake plants, whatever. Yes. It's brought me my wine. Have okay. a great week. So you'll have time to practice. So that's good too. Thank you. Okay. Thank you again. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.